Playing in the NFL is a dream come true for every player that makes it to that level. But just because a player's made a roster doesn't mean that they're destined for success, even if all of the pieces fall into place for them to become a superstar. You see, in some cases, the exact opposite can happen. And after a lifetime of work to get there, their legacy in the NFL is either completely forgettable or even worse remembered, but for all of the wrong reasons. It's the fine line that makes pro football so entertaining to follow, but so volatile from year to year. Because if you're being compensated as well as NFL players are, fan bases have every right to hold you and the whole team to a higher standard. So today, I want to discuss one of the more requested topics over these past few months on the channel, and that's the unique career arc of Devontae Adams of the Green Bay Packers. While it's easy to put on blinders and only look at the most recent years of a player's production and just make sweeping statements based off of that, there's often a lot more to the story and changes a player can undergo throughout their career. Devontae Adams is certainly living proof of that. Heading into his sixth NFL season after a breakout campaign in 2018 that certified him in the top tier of wide receiver talent in the whole NFL. But not too long in the past, fans and analysts who followed his own team were calling for him to be benched, or in some cases, cut, with disappointment after disappointment overshadowing whatever talent he seemed to have as a pass catcher. But before we get into Adam's journey from a favorite target for people to make fun of, to a player that many make arguments for as the best in the league now, I'd like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. For those of you who haven't heard of them before, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to help build a sleek, professional website with only a few mouse clicks needed. They have templates that easily accommodate whatever style you're looking to build around, whether that's a blog, a band, an online store, you name it and they've got it. Regardless of what you're creating, they've got every tool you need to bring your website to life as well. Features like video backgrounds, built-in mobile layouts for each template, tons of different fonts and customization, and even a built-in logo designer to help you better represent your brand or business. If you're ready to take your presence online to the next level, then head on over to Squarespace and start up a free trial just to check out their service. And then whenever you're ready to launch, click the pinned link down below in order to get 10% off your first purchase on a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash set the edge to turn your ideas into online realities. So for us to understand the ups and downs of the career path of Devontae Adams, we'll need to begin long before he had the opportunity to play for one of the NFL's most historic franchises. Coming out of high school in Palo Alto, California, Devontae Adams didn't take long to make a name for himself with the Fresno State Bulldogs. In his redshirt freshman season, alongside future Raiders quarterback Derek Carr, he'd lead the Mountain West in all three major receiving categories, with 102 receptions, 1,312 yards, and 14 TDs in his first season. And if that wasn't enough, he followed that up with an even more monstrous campaign in his redshirt sophomore season, posting video game totals of 131 receptions for 1,718 yards and 24 touchdowns through 13 games. While much of the competition in the Mountain West wasn't as polished as you'd hope for for an NFL receiver to be going up against, watching him play, there were a lot of the traits you'd look for in a talented pass catcher. He wasn't blazing fast or gigantic at 6'1", 212 pounds, but he had excellent body control and ability to high point the ball over defenders. He also had good after the catch skills and the ability to consistently create separation at the top of his routes. He was seen as a solid possession receiver who could make both an immediate impact on the roster and also still have a lot of ways to make improvements to his game. So after stuffing four years worth of production into two years at Fresno State, the Green Bay Packers would select Adams in round two of the 2014 draft with the 53rd overall pick, making him the ninth receiver off of the board. He was poised to be a solid number three for the Packers, who were already equipped with Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb at the one and two options. But despite his more minor role in the offense, Adams still had an extremely solid rookie season for the Packers. He did go through many of the ups and downs that are commonplace for young receivers under Aaron Rodgers, but showed a ton of promise that the team was excited to see materialize. The Packers would lose in the NFC Championship to the Seattle Seahawks, but even after that heartbreak, the team was still primed to make a Super Bowl run the following year, and Adams was set to play a role in that, with the size of that role still to be determined. However, the answer that would come to that question would be entirely unexpected the following season. In the weeks leading up to 2015, Jordy Nelson went down with a torn ACL that would cost him his entire year, leaving Adams to move up into a potential number two role behind Randall Cobb. While it was a crushing blow to the Packers offense, there was a lot of optimism for Adams to break out as one of the top pass catchers for one of the most high-powered offenses in football. He flashed all throughout training camp and the preseason, even being named unofficial offseason MVP by coach Mike McCarthy. He provided hope that even without Jordy Nelson, the players primed to be next man up would be just as able to be electric with Rodgers getting them the ball. 
With the regular season came more targets in Adams' direction as everyone expected, but despite the hype surrounding his sophomore campaign's potential, the narrative quickly changed from the moment he played his first game in 2015. It was bad, and while he sustained an ankle injury in week two that certainly didn't help him bounce back from poor performances, there were a number of other factors at play that continued to make fans scratch their heads all season long. In his past, Adams had had a few issues with concentration drops, but they had never been as severe of a problem as they were in the 2015 season. He posted a 53.2% catch rate on 94 targets, the seventh lowest in the NFL among all players with 90 targets or more. His 483 yards on that many looks were also by far the lowest mark in the league by that same criteria, since he managed to average a measly 5.1 yards per target across all of his 13 games played. He was getting the ball thrown his way by one of the best talents in the NFL, but he simply couldn't separate from defenders or capitalize on the opportunities that he was given in Green Bay's offense, even in comparison to his first season in the NFL. And soon enough, people were questioning whether even the positive traits that they saw in Adams at Fresno State were just a mirage all along, as there were a considerable amount of fans that were willing to give him up completely. But Devontae Adams wasn't about to just lay down and settle for being a wasted draft pick or a failed project in the Packers' offense. He went back to the drawing board to establish the parts of his game that would begin to set him apart in the NFL that offseason. He was able to get his ankle back to full strength, which allowed him to further improve on making his release more explosive and unpredictable off the line. In addition, he knew he needed to get more consistent with his hands, and then make the most of his opportunities when he did catch the ball. So rather than let himself go into a slump following the return of Jordy Nelson the following offseason, where many anticipated we'd see the beginning of the end of Devontae Adams, he stepped up in a much bigger way for Green Bay. Through the first six weeks of the 2016 season, he amassed five touchdown receptions. He was able to regain the trust of Rodgers, who still had faith in his young receiver, and it led him to a bounce-back campaign that saw him establish himself as the Packers' number two receiver, with 997 yards and 12 touchdowns on the year. Adams proved that the injury that hampered him in 2015 was a lot more serious than it was made out to be, and there was a clear difference in watching his tape from his second to third seasons. He would continue that run in 2017, though the overall success of the Packers was stunted significantly by the loss of Aaron Rodgers in just week six, leaving Adams and the rest of the receiving core to try and get the job done with Brett Hundley under center. Even despite that major setback though, Adams was still able to be productive, putting up 885 yards and 10 touchdowns over the course of the 14 games he played. He'd eventually sustain a concussion that would end his season early, but he finally began to see some recognition from the rest of the NFL as he was named to his very first Pro Bowl, which was a huge milestone to mark his turnaround from his lowest point just two years earlier. When this past season arrived in 2018, Adams found himself in yet another entirely new role in the Packers' offense, as Jordy Nelson would surprisingly be cut by the team leading up to the regular season. While many feared the impact that his loss would have, it provided a major opportunity for Adams to step up into the number one role on an offense that was already mostly bereft of pass-catching options heading into the year. He was already established as a dominant wideout, but to continue dominating week after week, Adams would need to take his game to new heights in 2018, since Rodgers was going to lean on him more than ever, and he did. Devontae Adams nearly set a franchise record for Green Bay with his 111 receptions, just one short of the mark held by Sterling Sharp. Rodgers went to Adams as early and as often as possible, because he just continued to find ways to get open down after down. At this point, his release at the line is up there in contention for best in the NFL alongside Keenan Allen and Antonio Brown in my opinion, and his explosive ability after the catch was as evident as ever, ranking fourth in the NFL in that category. Over his 15 games played for the Packers, he put up career highs in both yardage and touchdowns with 1,386 and 13 throughout the season. The nuances of his game are as polished as they've ever been, between his subtle changes in speed and bursts after the ball gets to him that make him so hard to stop. While a top 1% work ethic is mandatory to even make a roster in the NFL for most players, Adams has said that the struggles he faced early in his career only furthered his drive to improve at a rate that the competition just couldn't keep up with. He's not the flashiest or most imposing receiver in the NFL, but if you hesitate to focus all of your attention on stopping him even for a second, it's hard to find a better duo to ruin your team Sunday than Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Everything is just so beyond natural for the both of them now that there's even been some concern in Packers training camp that their connection has been so good it might be holding back other receivers, since Rodgers is just constantly throwing to an open Devontae Adams. 
So while he might have gone through some growing pains through his first two years, and had a lot of doubt cast onto him as to whether or not he was the receiver the Packers needed him to be, as we get closer to 2019, I don't think there's a single person that's willing to ask that question anymore. 